Greetings, Matinistas. Not many tourists make it any further than Istanbul when they visit Turkey. OK, yes, some tourists visit the seaside resorts on the southern, the Aegean, and the southwestern coasts, but don't venture further from their resort. When I was in Istanbul, I hadn't a clue where I was going to go in Turkey either. So, of course, I came to the coast where not many European visitors visit, the north coast of Turkey on the Black Sea. Welcome to Trabzon, where I'm going to show you some of the local sites and most importantly, the food focusing on the local specialities. Now, of course, this part of the coast isn't popular with everybody. Russian visitors come here, Turks from Istanbul and other parts of Turkey come here, and most recently, a lot of Gulf Arabs and Saudis because it's a refreshing, cool change from their baking hot summers. That's not to say it's cold in summer, but a European summer rather than a Middle Eastern one. I have to also say that it's quite a relaxing place to come in winter as well. During the day, I've been able to walk around in a polo or a t-shirt, but the sun's about to go down, and in my experience, it's got a little bit nippy. Not massively so, but enough to warrant wearing a coat. Okay, so the trip here isn't totally random. I'd like to thank, actually, Vance and Muzo, my friends, and Muzo is from this part of Turkey, but lives in South Manchester, for some suggestions they gave me. And in particular, one massive attraction, which I'm gonna bring you tomorrow later in this vlog. <laughs> I have to say that this town is actually quite modern, which surprised me a bit. I expected it to be fairly modern, but a little more traditional than Istanbul. And actually, it's a little bit the opposite way round, with one exception, which is that alcohol is less prominent. One thing it does have in abundance, though, are little tea houses where gentlemen, not exclusively gentlemen, but mainly, take tea, smoke, and discuss contemporary events, like how England are going to win the World Cup. Well, maybe not that. Anyway, I've been waffling for far too long. Let's crack on with the food. OK, so behind me, a statue of Atatürk, the founder of modern Turkey. The square is basically the heart of Trabzon. Atatürk Square, is it? Or Maidan Park and Gardens. I'm not really sure what the correct terminology is. Anyway, Trabzon's most famous dish is the pide, a flatbread usually topped with cheese and sometimes other toppings. I've shown you one or two of these in my short videos, the daily kebab, but here we're going to go for a full-on local version. Now, I don't know where exactly I'm going sometimes in this city. There are very, very few reviews to read, even fewer in English, and you've no idea whether it's a relative of the store or a genuine traveller, because the, most of those left in English are made by Turkish people. However, I'm usually good at working out where to go, and let's hope I've chosen a good one here. And if I'm wrong, it won't even appear in the video, and you'll never hear me saying this. So let's have a go and try pide at Kardak Pide and Dona. Folks, so there's no great mystery how this is made. Think of pizzas. Okay, I'm going to learn from the professor of pide making here. I've gone for one with cheese and pastrami, a bit different to the ones I've had before. Next comes the cheese, I think. And the 
species of choice usually for this dish is feta, I believe. Pastrom is like a dry, salty beef for those who aren't aware of what it is, but I think most of you would know what it is. It's a popular Western food. Well, I mean, the way he folds that up, I mean, it's like origami, isn't it? Uh, another basting with butter. Yep, he opens up the oven. In we go, well to the back of the oven. How they get these off the sticks without anything falling apart? Well, it's a skill in its own. Anyway, Matanistas, back to the table, and in a few ticks, I'm sure my dish will be ready, glistening, and ready for me to polish off. The cooking time is apparently 15 minutes, so we'd better tuck into an IRAM. Well, here's hoping that the dish turns out well. Can't call this a quick slurp, though, when it's a yoghurt drink. Yep, that's delicious. The butter adds that richness. I know it's traditional just to have the feta on top, but I do like a meaty topping as well to balance it out. Having the feta cheese on its own, which I believe is the most traditional type of pedo, it's like mowing through a cheese fondue. I also like the fact that the pastrami lends natural saltiness to the cheese, which I think is a good combination. The base is very light and crisp. The top is slightly heavier and a bit more doughy. To be honest, I would like thin everywhere, but that's not the way they do it here. So this is actually quite an old dish. I mean, this has been eaten through the centuries in this part of the world and in neighboring Georgia, the Kachapuri. Of course, pizza isn't wildly dissimilar. It is basically a cheese and meat bread preparation. But what came first, the pizza or the pide? If you know, please leave a comment. Anyway, I'll get on with this and I will be back with you shortly. This next stop for local fish. I couldn't really not bring you seafood from a coastal city. Now, the only seafood I brought you from Istanbul was that delectable mackerel sandwich from the little street store by the Bosphorus. So I thought I'd better bring you a bit more fish now. That's going inside to the restaurant whose name I'm going to have to leave a subtitle for. One thing I do know that if you see the word Balik, it does refer to fish. Balik Lokanta is the name. Again, apologies for my terrible pronunciation. And I'm guessing had I come here earlier in the day, there would have been tons of stuff here. But that's a good sign that they buy what they buy and they get through it and it's always fresh. Now they do have a television showing the football, but it does appear to have gone off briefly. Always a plus though, if you can watch the footy whilst you're eating. So I told the waiter, or in fact I think it's the manager, I wanted to try a couple of local specialities and I think it'll be way too much food, but we have to have variety on channel prime mutton. What was also suggested was the fish soup, so I've gone for the fish soup and that's obviously arrived first. I think there's either chard or kale in there with a few vegetables and a few chunks of local fish and a slice of lemon. I'm guessing I should squeeze it in. Well, a bit of citrus always works wonders with all sorts of food, but especially when it's of such a high quality as you get in Turkey. As always, in most Turkish restaurants, you get a free plate of salad or a bowl of salad, and I just love the way that you can sprinkle it with that lovely sumac. It makes a great start to any meal in Turkey. Okay, let's give the soup a whirl. It didn't look appetising or unappetising, so let's see how it tastes. It's really rather good actually. If you're here, order that. Forget about how it looks. That has got such a deep fishy flavour. And those herbs, the lemon, gives it a bit of zing. I'd say it's a, like a chard or kale soup with strong fishy flavours. It's a lovely combination. One thing that has surprised me is the absence of shellfish on the menu. 
I've seen the odd porn dish in the odd place. I don't understand why. I believe shellfish is halal, isn't it, Mutton Easters? Anyway, if anybody has any clues as to why that isn't the case, is it seasonal, is it the Black Sea, or is it just not to people's taste, please let me know in the comment section. And I was told that the local speciality or the best fish to have from that part of the world or the Southern Black Sea are the local fried anchovies. So that indeed I did order. Now call me on coot, so I've just picked one up with my hand. And they are good, very good. The breadcrumb and flour coating is just about the right level of thickness really. It coats the fish but it's not heavy. And I have to say, the bones, you can just munch through them. With these small fish, some people eat the bones, some people don't, the choice is yours. The next dish to come was described as sea bream. But I have to say, that looks a bit chunky for sea bream to me. It had a very, very strong fishy flavour. And in the end, I decided it was just too fishy. I didn't eat most of it, and the owner was a little bit upset when I didn't even want to take it away. It wasn't the worst piece of fish I'd ever had, but a lot of alarm bells started ringing, and for the sake of having paid for something you haven't eaten, better to do that than be sick the next day. Especially since the next day was going to be the highlight of my trip to Trabzon. Right, Mutton Easter's time for a bit of culture, and the big cultural attraction in the Trabzon area, and worth coming to Trabzon for alone, is the Semela Monastery. It's a Greek Orthodox monastery within the Pontic Mountains in the Alton Deer Valley. It's not so easy to get to, I took a taxi, it cost me $100 for the taxi driver to bring me, wait and take me back. But that's well worth it, and if three of you do it together, then it's quite a cheap day trip. The best photos are actually from the base of the mountain, but I wasn't able to go down there. But I'm sure you'll agree when you see the rest of my footage here that this is a truly spectacular place. It was founded in 386 AD during the reign of Theodosius I, a Roman emperor. The monastery fell into disrepair and ruin a few times and kept being restored by emperors and whoever was ruling and it carried on supporting monks right through the Ottoman Empire basically because the monastery was given the Sultan's protection by Sultan Mehmed II and by some subsequent emperors. I am astonished by how they managed to get the building materials up here, because, OK, there's a nice new road now that takes us all the way up. Even then, we have to clamber up a hell of a lot of steps to get to the monastery. And how did they get supplies here? I mean, donkeys can only do so much. A truly impressive feat. Anyway, when you arrive, you get dropped off by your taxi in a car park, then you pay a national park entrance fee and a bus fee because you have to be taken up by an electric bus. There is a lot of walking and climbing up steps to be done, so if you have mobility issues, this one might be a bit too challenging. I'm not Mr Fit, but you do have to be able to do a fair amount of walking. And I know what you're all going to ask me, is it in use today? The answer is no, they're classed as ruins. 1923, I believe, it was disestablished. Not sure whether that had anything to do with Ataturk or not. And I understand the monastery fell into ruin quite a few times and latterly was in use at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. And apparently the Russians, during World War I, occupied Trabzon. And having read the brochure a little more carefully, Apparently it finally closed down due to a Greek and Turkish population transfer in the 1920s.
Well, Martinistas, I hope you enjoyed that little cultural tour. I certainly did. This is one of the most spectacular places I've ever seen. Anyway, I'm getting hungry, and I'm sure you are too, so let's head back to Trabzon for a bit of fish. Now, Martinistas, fish restaurant take two. The first place I went to the night before I went to the monastery was not an overwhelming success. There were some good things like the soup, but obviously that mackerel smelt a little bit stale to me. Anyway, opposite my hotel, Renk Baliki, a little fish restaurant which I took a while to actually spot and I didn't realise that it was only open in the early evening and not late in the evening. So it would have been closed when I tried to go a couple of nights ago. I must admit I was a little bit worried about the lack of fish and seafood in the fresh display cabinet. But there seemed to be enough customers eating inside the restaurant, all locals of course or Turkish tourists, so I thought it would be pretty safe to give it a go. As usual, no English was spoken here, although there were a few words of English available written down on a sheet of paper. Of course, the wonderful things now you can get on your phones like Google Translate can iron out most problems. I must admit, it's part of the fun travelling abroad when you've got a language barrier to overcome. And as is often the case in Turkey, a little fresh salad and bread arrive on the table before you take your main meal. It's provided usually free of charge, well when I say free of charge, included in the cost of the main dish that you order. And I tend to find that salads here are dressed with lemon or lemon and olive oil. I'm not quite sure on what the halal status of vinegar is. If I remember correctly, I think balsamic is okay and wine vinegar is sometimes frowned upon. But I think I have seen it sometimes in Islamic countries. And then on to the fish soup. Again, one of the highlights of my meal here. If there's one thing that I'll remember from fish restaurants in Trabzon, it's the quality of the fish soup. And surprisingly well enhanced by a squeeze of lemon directly into the soup. And I was also quite surprised to see some boiled and some mashed potatoes arrive at the same time as the soup. Do you get those if you just order soup? Or were they a garnish for my main course? I'm not really sure. Anyway, one thing I can say is that as always in Turkey, you're never going hungry because they are so generous with the bits and pieces that they provide with whatever you've decided to order. Anyway, Mutanistas, talking of main courses, my mains now arrived. Anchovies, lightly coated in breadcrumbs or flour, I think breadcrumbs here, and they are basically the best fish you can get out of the Black Sea. Now, if you're wondering why that's the case, apparently the Black Sea, or this part of the Black Sea, is quite heavily polluted, so only the small fish are worth catching and eating. But wow, they were very good. And certainly, if you were to find yourself in this part of the world, just stick to the fish soup and the anchovies and you can't go wrong. Well, I enjoyed demolishing that whole plateful. The only thing that was missing was the ability to take a quick slurp with a glass of chilled white wine. Unfortunately, in this part of Turkey, eating and drinking don't seem to go together and I had to go elsewhere afterwards to get an alcoholic beverage. Anyway, the one thing I do enjoy at the end of a Turkish meal is the tea. And while I'm waiting for my tea to arrive, one thing I thought would be the case here is that it'd be the old-fashioned way that people, when they have seafood, it's only near the coast so that it's fresh. Slightly surprised again by the limited range that there is here, it does seem to hold true, because the places I'm going to next don't think you'll see much fish on the menu at all. Although I have to say, I find it a little absurd in Britain that a lot of people will not eat fish until they're on the coast. There must be people looking at a bygone age there, because I can assure you that the fish in London or Manchester might even be more fresh than it is in places like Bristol, Bournemouth or Eastbourne, because it depends a lot on where the ports are, and I don't think there are any ports around there because our ports in Britain are actually pretty much concentrated in small areas. Okay, the tea's arrived. I'm going to get on with this. Oh, yeah. And we will move on, Matanistas, to the next venue. 
Okay, Matanistas, we have arrived at the next venue. And the next speciality isn't, strictly speaking, a speciality of Trabzon. It is a speciality of the small town of Aksabat, just down the road. And what they make, which is particularly famous, are their meatballs. Apparently, they're veal meatballs. And the reason they're special is because it's only supposed to come from locally reared cattle. So having had kofta in Istanbul, I'm in a good position to judge whether this stuff really is the bee's knees. So the menu was pretty simple to negotiate. Either you could have a kofta, and they had various kofta menus, I went for the smallest one, or you could have a kofta hamburger, or you could have chicken. They did have fish items on the menu, but they weren't available today, which doesn't matter because I only came here for the kofta. And you won't be surprised to hear that, again, this restaurant is dry, so we're back on the old Iran. And OK, I haven't been everywhere here and I haven't necessarily been looking for it, but I've only been to one restaurant where they actually serve alcohol and that leans more towards being a bar than a restaurant. As always, a beautifully presented side salad. That's a bit bigger than a side salad, I have to say. I guess that's what comes of it being part of a set menu. Anyway, I'll have a bit of the salad, but we have another place to go to afterwards, so I've got to take it easy a bit. Now the meatballs have arrived. I went for the smallest menu, which was the 150 lira menu. I absolutely shudder to think what the 200, 250 and 300 menus are like, because this is big. This might be a struggle, folks. Okay, let's give one a try. They are very good, it has to be said. I mean, I guess with meatballs, there's no such thing as the sky being the limit, but those are as good as I've had. I mean, the meat just melts away into your mouth. It's got a strong, beefy flavour, and it's juicy and not overcooked. So every box being ticked here, the chilli isn't actually that hot. I was hoping for a bit of a spicy kick to go in these meatballs, but never mind. They are flavoursome anyway. I'm going to make as much of a dent as I feel I can into these, and I'll be back with you soon. Oh, and I was wrong about the chilli. It was a slow burner. Once I got into the middle of the chilli, as opposed to the first taste from the edge, the heat did start cranking up. Right, Matanistas, final dish, final restaurant, and in fact, my final day here in Trabzon. Now, again, a bit of trial and error, relying on reviews and Google Maps. Semi Luster here seem to have some very interesting local specialities, even though I understand they have a few restaurants dotted around Turkey. It is quite late now, it's after 10 o'clock, because I couldn't eat again so swiftly after those meatballs on the face. And good old Google says this place is open to 11. We have four backs if that's not the case, but there are a couple of things I really want to try from this place, so let's give it a go. Quite a big menu, but as luck has it, A, it's in English, B, there's a section called Regional Cuisine. But I'm going to hazard a guess that this stuffed cabbage is going to be enormous. The other thing I want to try is this kumak. It looked a bit like a cheese fondue to me, but I don't know. I doubt it is a fondue, but it will be something interesting and cheesy. Go on, let's give it a whirl, man, shall we? Also interesting to note that this restaurant has an ultra-modern interior. Very, very plush mutton Easters. And I suppose I'd better get a photo or wrap the video up with that little sign of Trabzon illuminated over there. So the first dish has arrived very quickly. That's the stuffed cabbage leaves, very similar to stuffed vine leaves, a popular item in Turkish and Middle Eastern cuisine. But here they prefer to use cabbage. Uh, a bit of rice, and I don't know what that is over there, but I'm going to try it. And I don't know what this is here, but the gentleman suggested that that and the vine leaves go together like peaches and cream. The iron yoghurt drink, beautifully presented, isn't it? Like a little silver goblet. Mm. I think that's homemade as well. It's very nice, that is. Okay, let's see what it is.
It looks spicy, and I thought, no, in Turkey, maybe not. But I, I like it, yeah. Some sort of spicy tomato paste. Sorry, I tell a lie, rice and meat. I thought that would be the case from what I saw written on the internet before. And then I thought, oh no, it looks like rice. No, but there's meat in there as well. Now I've just dumped one in that sauce, whatever it is. Hope it's not custard. must admit that sauce doesn't do anything for me. I'll stick to the spicy one. Our cheesy and corny feast has arrived. Good heavens, that is like a fondue, that is. Wow. Okay, thank you. So this kumak, kwaimak, kaimak is basically cornmeal and cheese, and I'm guessing there's a bit of olive oil or butter in there just to loosen it all up. I mean, this looks like the stringiest cheese ever. Mm. Maybe I should have put a cheap t-shirt on because this could end up coming all over my top. And since cheese fondue is usually eaten with bread, I'm going to ignore some of the other stuff and eat this with bread. Now, you could have written a comedy sketch about how long it took me to get that from the pan to the plate. And then I'm going to have an issue getting it onto the bread. But I have got a little bit on my fork. Yeah, you can taste the cornmeal and you can taste the cheese. They do like their cheese at this part of Turkey that I've noticed. Remember the pide? The classic pide here was basically cheese and butter. The menu on my research didn't state the type of cheese, but I'm kind of guessing it's the same feta. Rich and tasty, though. Over for a glass of red wine. Now, just getting this onto the piece of bread was more difficult than performing open heart surgery, so I'm going to have to get on with this two-handed. Not before. I confirm to you that the cheese and the bread is a very nice match. Anyway, in the words of a famous actor, I'll be back. So there we are, that was delicious, a lovely way of wrapping up the day with a cheesy feast. Now, obviously a fondue wouldn't have the cornmeal in, and it's a different cheese than they use over there, in those alpine locations. And I would also say that I'm not being hypocritical here, because you did hear me say with red wine, and that's because it's a very mild cheese. Mild cheese is red wine, stronger cheese is white wine, cider, sweet wine. And I guess one of the reasons why cornmeal is in there is to thicken up the cheese, which obviously would be very, very runny without it, and it wouldn't quite have the same flavour, again, because it's so mild. I understand also that this dish is very popular throughout the Caucasus, Georgia and Armenia and other places, so I've noticed there is a bit of a crossover between the stuff that you get in Georgian restaurants, not that I've been to many, and stuff here on the Black Sea coast of Turkey. And the IRA is actually as good as I've had on this trip. Maybe then somebody's going to write in the comments, oh, I know this restaurant, they pour it out of a tin. But I don't think so. I think they've made it themselves. And it seems I've been brought some complimentary tea. I've been having a lot of tea on this trip. But one thing I haven't had yet, something I've had a lot in the UK, in Turkish and Middle Eastern establishments, is baklava. They've just given me a little bit, which I appreciate. Because I've noticed if you order it as a dessert, you get some ridiculously large slab of it which you can't possibly finish. And even if I did eat it, all my sugar would shoot through the sky. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's about what I expected, but thankfully they haven't gone mad with the honey. Now, before I wrap the vlog up, I just want to point out Le Chenas. I've mentioned it in another of my daily kebab vlogs. Obviously, this will be out a lot later than those. But it's one of the few places where you can get something to eat and alcohol at the same time. And they have live music in the evening. Obviously, I can't go around vlogging live music, but I did have a really good time listening to a creative Turkish rock band. So, those of you who are basically looking for information in my vlogs, that's a good place for you to go if you want to drink.
Anyway, I will wrap things up now, and what a lovely short stay I've had in Trabzon. It's a very much undervisited part of Turkey. I strongly recommend it, just for that monastery and nothing else. But if you're a cheese lover, you'd also love the fare here as well. That pide, which is basically a kind of sourdough bread, plenty of cheese, and of course, that kaimak, or however you're supposed to pronounce it, at the end, that was a real cheese lover's treat. Anyway, folks, by no means the end of my vlogging and my series in Turkey. Plenty more content coming to you from other parts of Turkey. But until then, keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. But most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.